first question. I think like this is this is a good one to start with. If you had to start learning guitar all over again, where would you start? Man, that's a great question. Okay, there's there's a lot of possibilities. Uh, okay, so what I what I if I had to start all over again, where would I start? Knowing what I know now. Oh yeah. Yep. I'm assuming. Okay. Yeah, totally. So the truth is that when it comes to playing guitar, there's two areas that you need to learn. One is physical. And one is the mental side. Now, it may seem pretty obvious, but let me kind of explain what I mean. And this is going to make a lot more sense. And then I'll answer the question. The first part is the physical side. So in the beginning, every single person who plays guitar can't play the guitar. Yes, even Jimi Hendrix or Steve Ray Vaughan or, you know, all those guitar players that you love that just look like they effortlessly move up and down the fretboard. Guess what? They couldn't play at first either, right? They had to learn how to play. And part of that is physically moving your fingers on the fretboard. So one of the first things that I would do is actually find someone who knows what they're talking about when it comes to playing the guitar who can show me a set of step-by-step -step exercises that i can actually do with my fingers kind of like going to the gym or working out but it's on my fretboard and i can move my fingers around in a certain way to basically give my fingers the flexibility and the fluidity the ability to move around the fretboard like you need to be able to do for a guitar that's first and foremost if you can't do that like if i move my guitar over here this hand i mean Look at the difference between my, this is my right hand. Look at the difference between my, my fingers. Like, I don't even know what to do with my fingers on the, on the fretboard with my other hand. I have no idea how to stretch them, you know, stretch them apart. It just, it's so awkward. It's so weird. I would have no clue how to play. Look at this. It looks so horrible. But if I go to this hand, look, looks like I know what I'm doing, right? Well, guess what? This hand used to be like this hand. I just develop the ability for it to do this. And any person, any, anybody who has fingers can do the same thing. You just have to know exactly what to do and how to do it. So like I said, it's just like an exercise program. You got to know what to do first. The, the easy steps, right? You got to start out with the small weights and you got to know what exercise to do. Then you increase the weights then you increase the weights then you increase the weights. Now, I don't literally mean taking weights and putting them on your fingers. They do have those, but it's not necessary to use it. What I mean is progressively increasing your finger strength and your flexibility. So again, if you can't do that, if you can't move your fingers around the fretboard, you can't play. So you have to do that first. So that's number one. The second thing is the mental side, right? The mental side is how the heck does music work on the guitar? And most people don't think about it that way. Most people think of, well, I'm gonna pick up the guitar and I'm gonna learn some chords or I'm gonna learn a scale or something like that. And I'm thinking I'm learning the guitar, right? But really what you wanna do is learn music, How music works applied to the guitar and when you learn how music works because music is a language you can actually learn and play any instrument really really fast in fact um i i got a used saxophone one time and from never having played saxophone in my entire life i was improvising with backing tracks in about 30 minutes why because it's not about how the saxophone works it's about how music works and since i understand the language of, of music and when you understand the language of music you can apply that language to any instrument you just have to learn the mechanics of that instrument first. For example, like the saxophone or the guitar or the piano, etc. So we have the physical side, which is moving your fingers around. You have to do that first. You don't have to complete that before you move to the mental side, but you do need to be doing that. You do need to be exercising your fingers and making them more flexible and able to stretch further. Uh, but on the mental side, the truth is that there's really only a handful of key pieces of information that really kind of put the whole picture together. And the rest of the pieces are kind of like supporting pieces, if that makes sense. For example, let's say you have a jigsaw puzzle and jigsaw puzzle is in front of you. And the jigsaw puzzle is a picture of a house and a, a big flower pot, and then like a sky in the background. Well, there's only three pieces of information that you need to know to know what that whole picture is all about, to see the big picture, right? You see that it's a flower pot, you see that there's a house, and you see that there's some clouds in the background, so it looks like a sky. All the supporting details just make up those three different images. All the little flower petals, all the pieces of the pot, all the little pieces of the clouds, all that kind of stuff. And those little pieces are what people, what most guitar players get bogged down with because they go to YouTube or they go to books or they go to something source, you know, their neighbor down the street or something. And from all those sources, they get these little bits and pieces, but they don't see the big picture. They don't see that the big picture is really only a handful of pieces. It's a handful of pieces of information. It's not all these tiny little pieces that you have to get from the entire puzzle. And then eventually, hopefully one day when you collect enough pieces, it will all make sense. It doesn't work that way. 
So the reason I bring this up is because you asked me what would I do if I had to start all over from the beginning. I would go to somebody uh, who, again, is a, a professional guitar player, knows what they're doing. I would find them online or, or wherever I can find them. These days it's easier online. Um, and I would basically get them to show me how does the big picture work? How does it all fit together? What are the components that I need to know, right? And I'll just go ahead and tell you what those basic pieces are. So most people get bogged down in what they, what's called music theory. And when I say music theory, that means a lot of things to a lot of people, but images and, and words and things that come up are like notes and scales and key signatures and things like circle of fifths and, and this seemingly complicated mathematical type stuff. It really all boils down to this. Music works in a very simple way, okay? You have notes, and if you take any of those notes and you put them together, you make a chord. You play them at the same time, right? So you, you have a series of notes, uh, let's say note one, two, three, four, five. If you play note one, three, and five at the same time, well, you just make a chord. And, and that's essentially the very basics of how this works. Yes, there are different keys. Yes, there are different notes and different names of notes like G sharp and you know all that kind of stuff, but that's really not that important for right now. What I would be looking for for somebody to tell me is that if you have a, a collection of notes, let's say all the possible notes that can be played, in Western music, which is what we're talking about on this guitar, there's 12 possible notes. Now, without naming any of the notes, it's, it's not important. We just need to know the big picture, how it works. So out of those 12 notes, if I pick any of those 12 notes and I play them in a series, that's what's called a scale. That's it. Okay, that's what a scale is, essentially. I can pick out of those 12 notes, I could pick note, let's say, one, three. Let's pick all odd numbers. Why not? Let's call it the odd scale. If I pick note one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, that's called the odd scale, right? That's what a scale literally is. A series of notes out of the, the possible pool of notes that we have. Now, if I take any of those notes from the scale, one, three, five, uh, seven, nine, and eleven, and if I play any of those notes at the same time, that makes a chord. But I want to point out something that the chord, where did the chord come from? The chord came from the scale. The chord is made up of notes in the scale. And when you under, when you start to understand how music works, let's say this is a G note, and I don't want to get into the weeds, but on a high level, the big picture, right? If I play a G major scale, there's seven notes in the G major scale. If I start a chord on each of the seven notes of the G major scale, I will end up using only the notes that I've been playing in the scale, and I will end up with seven chords. It's not important what they're called right now. It's not important what the names of them are. My point is they're in a, let's call it a major scale in this case, in a scale, chords come from the scale. And that's all those seven chords that I just talked about sound good together. If you go to a different key, play a different scale, there's seven more different chords in a, let's say a major scale, for example. But if we go back to my example about the odd scale, well, if I have, how many notes did I have in the odd scale? If there's 12 possible notes and we only pick the odd numbers to make a scale, we have uh, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and 11. How many notes is that? 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. That's 6. I know that it's, it's weird for me counting the numbers and saying different numbers will out, but there's 6 notes. So if there's 6 notes in the scale, how many chords are we going to have? Six, because we have one chord starting on each of the scale notes. And listen, that's basically all there is. Like, that's how it works. That's the big picture. I know we didn't talk about specifics, and it would take us a little bit longer to explain. Like, you asked me, what would I do from the very beginning? Whoever that person is that you would go to to explain this to you, of course, there's more details, right? You need to know the details to really get how this all makes sense. But I just want to illustrate how simple it is. Going back to the big picture idea of the, the jigsaw puzzle that I talked about. You have a flower pot, you have a house, and you have a sky in the background. That's all there is that makes up the picture. The details are almost irrelevant. Or the details matter, but they don't make up the big picture. Or they're not important to learn first. The overall point is that if you learn the framework of how music works on the guitar, which is what is the scale, where do chords come from, basically if you play the notes in a scale in series, you're playing a scale one at a time, basically. Or if you play them, uh, the notes from a scale at the same time or simultaneously, then you're playing a chord. 
And all there are are different combinations of notes and chords. And that's all there is. So when you learn how that works, you really start to get it. It's like, oh, I see the big picture now. I see how it all fits together. And then when you go out there on YouTube and in books and all, and all the other places that you learn from, and you learn all those little bits and pieces of information, guess what? Now all those bits and pieces of information have a place. Now they fit somewhere, just like they do in a jigsaw puzzle. It's the same reason why whenever you do a jigsaw puzzle, you always put the edges first because you define your box, right? Then you have a place where all, where all the pieces go. That's the key. That's what I would try to learn. The, the very first thing I would try to, to learn because that's going to accelerate the rest of your progress exponentially. So those two things. Yeah, that's really good. Really good stuff. Hey, thanks so much for watching that video. That was just a short clip of one of our longer Q&A videos. If you're interested in watching some more of those videos, then I recommend you hit the subscribe button over here. It's really awesome. Also, we got more videos over here, so check some out if you're interested in learning more about breakthrough guitar or advancing your guitar skills. Peace.